park about a mile away from the house today. Not really, it's about an eighth of a mile, around a couple blocks. They're putting fiber optic in. I don't know if you can see it back there. Super noisy. But you're gonna have fiber optic in the neighborhood when you move in. It's a plus. So in the electrical panel, we've actually got something going on right here. We got a white wire going into a circuit breaker, which caught my attention. So I followed it in, and it is on a breaker that does allow two different wires. Just like this one right there. You see how that one's attached? It's got a wire on the top, a wire on the bottom. That's because there's openings for that wire to sit in there on the top and the bottom. They're not both supposed to be pushed into one side like that. That could cause them to come loose and cause some sparking. So that needs a little bit of fixing right there. This white and red wire should look like those two black wires right there. Typically I like sea gutters, right? Gets rid of rain runoff, gets all of it from the roof. Instead of going into the foundation, it's actually gonna come down here. Except for when they attach OSB to the back side of it, untreated. So that gutter didn't line up probably with the roof line for the water to dump into the gutter right so they extended it out with a piece of OSB right there and that OSB is shot it's starting to warp all the way down starting to deteriorate so everything that that fascia or everything that's attached to that fascia is slowly gonna pull off and fall down that wasn't very intelligent that untreated wood right there. It's not painted or anything. There's no protection on it. It's just gonna fall apart over time. Up on the fascia, those fascia boards really like to curl. When I talk fascia boards, that's the outside board that you can see underneath the concrete tile, right by the soffit. So right there is where we're missing this clip. These clips go right in that area to help hold that fascia together so it doesn't warp and curl. The other one was put right there and it's still holding strong. It's very common for these to come out over time, but they should be put back up there just so that fascia doesn't warp out. This is our main water shutoff valve. It's connected right above a pressure regulator. So this pressure regulator is actually making this a closed system. So there's a valve in there, a one-way valve that won't let water or won't allow water to go back down the pipe. So with that check valve in there, or the one-way valve, we really need to see a pressure tank inside by the water heater just to allow for the expansion and the contraction of that water inside the pipes. But it is leaking. We've had previous leaks, some corrosion built up down there. So that copper pipe or these fittings need to be looked at, possibly repaired or replaced. Overwatering is a common thing in Arizona, and it's easy to see where all the overwatering is when it's right next to concrete. All this exposed aggregate is from excessive moisture. So there used to be a tree right here, or at least a bush, shrub, something. But they were watering a lot, and all that moisture wicked into that concrete, and the concrete finish started falling off. So that's why all that aggregate is exposed right now. So especially in areas like this, we got to look for settlement. We gotta look, see if these stairs fell down at all. Look at the distance up there compared to the distance back by the door. It should have a little bit of a slope, but it shouldn't dip down much. It doesn't, it doesn't look too bad today. Pretty level. Main plumbing cleanouts buried underneath the bush. Main water shut off there. Main water comes in from the meter out here at the street. Right underneath that bush there. Really can't see much. Oh, yeah. You about see the meter, and that's about it. Some of this bush needs to be cut back so this is accessible for the utility company. So when I first pull up to a home, one of the first things I notice is bird stop, which is that metal band right below those concrete tiles, that dark brown metal. 
Due to the age of this house, this house was built in uh, 97. They didn't use bird blocking back then, so that's my first indication that they've replaced the underlayment underneath the concrete tiles. So it's either had some roof leaks at 36 years old or 20, 26 years old. Underlayment gets about 20, 25 years of life out of it. So yeah, I'm expecting new underlayment. In the driveway, there's a bunch of these turtle shells or craze cracking. It's just from the finish, not curing at the same rate as the subsurface. A little bit of cracking over there on the single bay of the garage doors. So it extends all the way down from the street. It starts right here at the sidewalk and goes all the way into the garage there. It's usually from settlement on this side. So excessive moisture, roof runoff, right into this area. You can actually see that sidewalk looks like it's settled just a little bit as well. That's what moisture does in Arizona. The gutters up there on the roof surface way up top looks like it's used that OSB board too. That one doesn't look as bad as it does on the side there though. Gable vents above the garage. Paint finish is definitely wearing off on these. We need to repaint these. Excessive moisture. You've got a downspout draining into a confined area. There's no drain out here. So where's all this moisture supposed to go that you're pulling off your roof and dumping right in here next to your foundation. Now you're trapping it with the sidewalk and then you're blocking the sun from evaporating it with the bushes. This needs to stay dry next to your foundation so you don't have structural issues. You need to provide adequate drainage out to the street so when this builds up full of water it doesn't go over the top of the sidewalk. It's got a route to go. Honestly, if you can, put an underground drain all the way out from the street. Did a video on pop-up drains yesterday. You could do a pop-up drain all the way back here so all this water goes directly out there. Sometimes these planks are missing bolts. It's not a big deal. I'll try and put it in the report though. It doesn't latch up perfectly, line up perfectly, but it is functional. Top caps on these CMU block walls are almost always loose. We just need to get some masonry cement, stick in there, pop these back on so they don't fall off on somebody's head. And I found some more of that OSB. You can see where it's starting to split out in certain areas. It's just delaminating and it's just gonna continue to delaminate until it falls apart and all the fasteners fall out that were used to attach that gutter to it. And then the gutter's gonna fall. Sunscreens are great. They're screens put on the outside of the window that you can't take on or off without undoing some screws. It's pretty easy to just pop these off. A little nut driver, pull them down and then expose your windows. Usually when they sell a house, they'll take the sunscreens off just so it lets more light in the house and it looks better. But when I see them on an inspection and I walk up to a window like this, I can't see the frame. I can't do a visual inspection of the exterior of this window properly. I can check around the perimeter. That's about it. But when you're having a home inspection, it's a good idea to remove these sunscreens to allow me to look at the window so the buyer doesn't have any questions. So we've got a couple air conditioners, Goodman units, one's for upstairs, one's for downstairs, 3,000 square foot. So the four ton unit, the larger unit, is for the downstairs because there's more square footage. And the smaller unit, which is a three ton unit, is for upstairs. Stucco crack repairs don't always have to look pretty, they just have to be sealed. You need to make sure that those cracks stay sealed. You don't have anything going on leaking into the wall in this area. So we've got a little bit up there that needs to be repainted. That'll just prevent water from coming back into the house through the stucco. So a stucco wall sits on top of the stem wall on the outside of the slab, the foundation. And then that stucco wall extends over the edge and then it's got a weep screed underneath of it. So if water gets into the stucco, it's got a way to drain out of those holes right there. You need those holes to let moisture out. But well, looking over here at the chimney, this is going straight up to the roof. There's no weep screed. 
You see they made it level with the foundation wall there, stem wall. So if moisture gets behind this stucco, there's nowhere for that moisture to go. There's nowhere for it to drain. It's going to run back this way or run back that way. Should have had a weep screed put under that. They put one on the side. See that overlap? There's nothing on the outside here, the perimeter. This looks like a patch. They went over this with some concrete. They had some issues with this before. And instead of resetting it or digging out the concrete and putting new concrete in, they just patched it. So they put more material and more material on top of it until you eliminated your weep screed up on top. So you eliminated your drainage in this area. So the wall system is now compromised because you did a foundation repair inappropriately. Moisture's a pain. It's a real pain. You never know where it's going to land. You know, never can predict exactly where the settlement's going to happen. But when you have grass, you're irrigating. You have a big roof, all your runoff, landing right next to the foundation, and you have sidewalks around your house. There's nowhere for the moisture to go, so it just sits here. It goes down, and it sits until it dries out. Sometimes it can cause some heaving. Heaving is when moisture actually gets so dense underneath the concrete that it blows up, it expands. So it expands upwards, pushing that slab up, and now that slab is stuck in the heaving position. We've got some major expansion joint cracks going on there that looks like they've tried to be sealed before. But you know how much moisture they're getting because you look at all this exposed aggregate on the side of the patio here. All this is telling me that there's been excessive moisture in here coming out. They've tried to block it with some of this stuff here, but just look at how nasty that is. The slab has sought a lot of water in this area. So the unevenness starts about right here. This slab on the right starts lifting up and this one stays even. If I follow my foot along this crack right here, I can feel how the right slab starts lifting more and more, and the left is staying even. All the way out, it gets worse and worse towards the end. So how do you fix something like that? <clears throat> Get a concrete repair company to come in, try and lower that, um, lower it down so it's even, has just a little bit of grade to it, so if moisture does get on here, it can run off and seal that expansion joint. Nothing like sheetrock at the exterior. Nail pops are always going to be common because sheetrock and paint, they love to let moisture in. And then those nails absorb the moisture and it turns to rust and then it just expands and pops the paint off. Very common, especially out here on the patio. Do not wash this ceiling with water. Don't wash it with water. Sheetrock. It would be the same as washing your walls in the, in the inside of your house with a hose. Not very smart. Now these are wooden columns. On the inside of this is just wood. On the outside of it is stucco. But it goes all the way down to the ground and I can't see any of the concrete foundation in between the stucco and the ground. So I don't know if there's termites in here. We need to see an inch or two to allow that to dry out and so I can visually detect termites before they start going into your house. We have some more settlement of the pavers in the back. Excessive moisture or an inch of the grass. It's going to happen a lot. We actually have some settlement right around that column as well. I don't know if you can see the concrete dip down in that area. But the crack starts right there, wraps around. And that column is actually sunk down a little bit. Let's see if I can make it a little more obvious. See that's just a little bit lower. Moisture. See the crack forming right there? All the way around it's forming a perimeter, it's forming a circle. Now if we step back and take a look at the patio surface, can we tell if it's actually dropped a little bit from a distance? It's not easy to tell, but it has. It's dropped down a little bit. Exposed PVC is going to deteriorate a lot quicker than if you just put a real quick coat of spray paint on there. Just get some exterior grade spray paint. Cover this up, try and match the wall the best you can. 
make it blue for all I care. But you just want to cover this PVC so the sun doesn't damage it. <clears throat> if you've ever saw PVC in the outside in the sun, you've saw black spots. Like it starts turning black and then it gets brittle. So then you touch it and it just cracks and falls apart. So put some paint over it, be good to go. This ongoing leak right here, I would address it whenever you can. It's not a major leak, but it is going to get worse before it gets better. They can't really tell what they have going on here. It's That's concrete. That's part of your stem wall, but it's stucco down the outside. So I don't know if that was original or not. It doesn't look bad, but we're looking for any movement. Is it straight? Weep screed underneath of it. Want to make sure that that's all going to drain out. So if any moisture gets up in here, it's going to just pour out down here. And on the side of the house, we want to make sure if moisture does build up over here, it's going to drain out there. Looks proper. I know it doesn't look like a lot of grading or drainage, but for Arizona, this is pretty sufficient, actually. Although having your pool pump and pool equipment next to your house is about the stupidest idea ever. These things leak like a hundred times a year. And you're just going to put all that moisture right next to your foundation and cause yourself more problems than if you had that pool equipment mounted back there in the corner. Had a little wall put up so you can't even see it. Plus it'll be quieter on the inside of the house too. Don't get me wrong, I'm not recommending that you move this equipment. I just don't think this is a very good idea to put it right here. And your gutters need to be cleaned out. This is pretty nasty up here. It's pretty thick, full of crap. Needs to be cleaned out. Looking up here on the roof surface, you can see that that's that bird block we were talking about, that dark brown. Prevents birds from going in underneath the underlayment or underneath the concrete tiles. And if we lift this up, we're taking a look at the underlayment, batten boards, nails look pretty fresh. That looks pretty good. Which one does not look like the other? Repairs. This whole area is leaked in the past and they've had to repair all the ridge tiles. They had to replace all these. Possibly not all in this area. Could have been from other places. These concrete tiles are kind of universal. They kind of go wherever. You either have an S tile or a ridge tile. So when we see different colors, it means there's been repairs. Another indication that they replaced the underlayment at some point. So here's your chimney up on the roof surface, sticking down. So think about all the water that's running down here in a monsoon rain. It's just going to hit right directly into that chimney. Now they put a good cap sheet in here so that's going to help prevent any leaks in this area but it's so flat right it's too bad they didn't invent something that you could put in this place to like divert the water to the sides of the chimney oh yeah it's called a cricket you can put a cricket in here 30 inches wide you get 30 inches or more should have a cricket even under 30 inches should have a cricket get that water out it's just common sense probably had a bird hit that I don't know it's a little dented, but no going on. So the mortar caps even look like they're not even cracked out. So this is probably less than a year or two old. This underlayment anyway. The concrete tiles are original to the house. They put some bird stop in here or some uh, bird blocking material. Again, with the finish on the gable vents, the paint is wearing really thin. This house needs a good painting just to protect all that wood. But the caps look good concrete tile roof actually looks great one thing I want to mention about these older concrete tile roofs sorry that ditch which is making a lot of noise but these older concrete tile roofs get really slippery so the smoother they get the more that they give off this chalky material they're starting to break down so they get smoother over time you can start to see some of that craze cracking finish and the material is starting to break down so when these get wet these older concrete tiles they are super slippery. Some of them still have good texture, different roofing materials, kind of like that. Probably have a little rougher surface, but these older ones from the 80s and 90s, they get really slippery. So just be very careful if you get on your roof. And another way a home inspector can kind of judge the amount of time since the last servicing of the roof or since the last repairs, is look at the caulking joints. 
if they had to replace these caulking joints when they put these caps back on the, the edge caps this caulking only lasts maybe two three years down in Arizona until we start cracking and separating and moving it doesn't look terrible right now you can see it all the way up but several of them are already pulling off up higher up such so as indicating to me that this is moving and it's been time so over time these are falling apart releasing and some of these are getting loose need some more repairs so right up there on your head wall where the roof meets the wall intersection right there where you have some flashing that always builds up with bird poop even though you have that bird protection right there those birds are going to hang out there and they're going to poop and all that poop is going to build up in that flashing and then it's going to limit the water drainage in that area so you really want to get up there once a year and make sure that that bird stuff is cleaned off just so you have proper drainage other than that this roof looks pretty good Um, yeah, except for, probably want to wash that out. That's kind of what I was talking about. That's some nasty crap. Ugh. So we're going to start on the inside now. I'm going to be a NASCAR driver today and just make a bunch of left-hand turns. So we're going to make our way around the whole first floor making left-hand turns and then we're going to go upstairs and make full left turns. Just make sure we don't miss anything today. Check out these handrails that not super sturdy. They're supposed to withhold 400 pounds. I don't think I would do that. Here are the windows on the front of the house. We've got two single hung windows. And we've got one big picture window in the middle. We've got some old water stains in these corners. Water marks. All that's from moisture in the past. This window is pretty shot. It is a dual pane window. But you can see how nasty all that is. Those seals are probably toast. So any rain that hits this window and then runs down is gonna seep in through now. It doesn't help you to seal it on the inside. You gotta seal it on the outside. Got a light set up here on a timer just so everybody thinks that drives by thinks that somebody lives here. It's pretty common on a open house or a listing. So I checked the electrical outlets for pr proper polarity and proper connection. They tested good. Now I'm starting to look at all the walls for any shifting. Got my flashlight, gonna make some passes over the surface. I'm seeing a couple bumps over there by that window. I'm seeing a bump right there. Let's investigate this. So we've got a pretty decent sized crack coming down here from the window. It's actually really soft. We haven't had rain for quite a while so I don't expect this to have moisture in it but I'm gonna test it anyway. It's fine. It's okay to have a little bit of moisture and everything. I wanna stay under that 20%, um, specifically to bring in termites. Over 20%, you start seeing mold growth and termites coming in. We can follow these cracks all the way up this window. So that crack is extending. It's probably a sheetrock crack, but why it was formed I'm uncertain without looking inside the wall there wasn't any specific roof leaks up there you can tell that they've patched that they've actually raised the surface level out so it's really easy to find oh and we've got more that's you can see the cuts in the sheetrock. I mean, that's a, that's a straight cut. If this was just a random stress fracture, that wouldn't be so straight. That one's straight up too. That's just a piece of sheetrock right there that's starting to move around and might have got wet. Might be temperature differences. I'm uncertain without getting up there, but this could be patched up, cleaned up. This texture is terrible. 
So vaulted ceilings, even the vaulted ceilings have cracks up there. Look at that. That's a pretty big crack, actually. It's probably just sheetrock, but... I wouldn't be surprised if the roof leaked and we were starting to see some tape lines wrinkle from the moisture. They ripped them out and had to patch that. Since the roof has been re repaired, new underlayment was put in. Something's telling me that there's been some work there. Look at that shadow over there, right by the area we were just at, right above it on the ceiling. It's interesting. It's not from, that's, that's in the paint. That's actually black. like to know what that is who knows it might be mold on the top side of that sheetrock could just be some shadows it's hard to say if I can't actually look at it which I can't it's vaulted ceiling I'm not gonna be able to get access in here I'm just gonna list this out to a client say that there's been something going on here some repair work I don't know what it is if you can ask the seller and get more information that's always a plus get it right from the horse's mouth instead of having me out here trying to predict where all this came from and you know a lot of times we're wrong because we just guess and if the seller can just give you information as what caused all this you're good to go into the kitchen swing door no door latch door knobs on that Pantry doors, Samsung appliances, nothing super fancy. Sink, dishwasher by Samsung as well, so all the appliances appear to match. We'll come back to the kitchen at the end. Um, this is like where I like to finish up my inspection because it's the last things I like to test. We'll come back through here and we'll test this. Check the dishwasher after I run it. not run it there we go just fire that up make sure that we don't have anything obstructing the drain just let that run we'll make sure that this doesn't leak on the ground while it's running quite a few of the windows here have broken plastic right where the latches are it's because these things get closed with these latches are locked so that latch comes down and breaks the plastic on all of them. So yeah, you can still latch these, they're just tight. Windows on this house are getting pretty old, pretty shot. It's really tight. Still lifting, we're just missing a screen. Protect those, but like I said, they usually take these off just to improve the view outside if they don't get open that often. Looks good. Broken tile. Some more cracks. This is on the back side of the house. We've had settlement on that patio surface right on the exterior there, so there might have been some pulling, some pushing, some movement right here at the connection to the house. Not associated with those cracks, but that's a pretty good size crack too. Not done with these. Got more. Trying to open the French door. So these French doors usually have a latch that goes up. So you can unlatch it right there. And then one on the bottom as well. This one just happens to be missing its handle. So I can't pull that out of there. That's stuck. So you're gonna have to get that fixed if you want this door to work. A couple more. Hey, a good one. Nope, not good. Not good at all. Look at the bottom of this window frame. Pew. I don't know what's going on there, but it's got a nice little gap here where you can let moisture and bugs in from the exterior. So that's not good. So remember how we were talking about excessive moisture out here by the slab? We've had some sediment, some heaving actually right here, some settlement going on over there with that column, but heaving from the excessive moisture because we trapped it all in with that sidewalk out here. So as I walk along this wall, I'm looking at the trim, 
trim board looks like it's been warped, cocked, warped, cocked, warped, cocked several times. Even looks like possibly a water leak right above the chimney area. Then you look at more of this trim and it's all gunky. And what happens to wood when it gets wet? It expands and then when it dries out it doesn't dry back to where it originally started from so you get these warps cracks. The wood comes out and then leaves that gap in between the trim and the wall so they just shove a bunch of that frosting down there and expect that to clean it all up but not really the best way. It's a good way for me to find stuff but looking at this chimney we're looking at some of that grout falling off there off the tile work and carpet. Oh, I don't like carpet next to fireplaces. Just not a good idea. Tile in general, shot. Or just need to re grout. Tile looks fine, grout looks crap. Got more sheetrock cracks right here, too. Come down, you can see the tape joint. Look at all these grout cracks. There, there, all the way over. Got a nice little gap up there. All of these tiles are separating completely loose. Look at this. That whole thing moves. Moisture, settlement, that's what it does. It's Arizona, that's why we use gutters. You don't have to listen to me, but if you don't wanna pay for that, you do. Just have to see this crack right here. Look how nasty that crack is. It's actually a pressure crack. I push those tiles down and in. So yeah, they had some foundation repairs on the outside of the chimney, but I'm not sure if they corrected everything. You're gonna to want to get a professional contractor in here to take a look at all this. One, replace all the tile because now you're gonna have embers going behind the tiles and possibly burn the whole house down. But two, you want to look at the stability of the chimney. Make sure it's not falling apart. Now we looked at the foundation out here. It seems to be fine. Looks like it's patched, but it's probably moved some. It's probably shifted some, as we can tell by all the grout lines that are cracked out on the front and the side here. So I wouldn't use that until you have a professional come in and give him, give you his okay. Still more. We're not done. So this outlet right here didn't have power when I first tested it. So I walked over and I turned those light switches on and now it does have power. So this is a half hot outlet. So it should have power on both sides now. Oh, well, that ground doesn't look too good. But it should have power on both sides. Now if we turn these lights off over here, it should turn that outlet off. Yeah. See that one? Half hot. This is always hot, that's switchable. So it's standard practice to have these upside down so you can tell which outlet it is, and then the top would be hot, the bottom would be switched. But at least you know where it is, it's over here in the corner. Don't have to replace this electrical switch or electrical outlet, you just have to turn on the switch. All right, let's take a look at this air filter. Pop those screws open. This is a air handler mounted right on the other side of this wall. Ooh, yeah, that filter's got some dirt on it. Definitely want to replace the filter. Take a look down here. Bottle cap. That's your condensate drain. Taking a look at, not sure what that is back there. But look at that board right above your HVAC unit. And then they just cut a hole in the floor to allow the air through. Yeah, that board is shot. It's not holding anything up anymore. Interesting. Then this is the air handler. There's no gas on the house, so everything's going to be electric. This is just a air handler to handle all the air that goes on. Your condensate drain there, you've got a safety switch. 
But all the air that gets sucked in from this room right here goes through that filter, comes up through here through the air exchanger, then gets pumped out through all of your ducts and all of your registers. That's how that works. I think we're looking at a 2021 or 09. I gotta double check that with Goodman. Nice and quiet. It's a nice quiet system. And in the little den or bedroom that we have here, it does have a closet, so it is a bedroom. Electrical outlets working fine. This window open and closed find. I think we're missing something here. I thought it sounded kind of loud in here. You're missing the trim piece that covers up the edge of this window to help keep it sealed. So yeah, that just goes right outside. Yeah. Window shot needs to be replaced or repaired, definitely. I don't know if that's even going to line up anymore. You see how cockeyed that is? Repair by a professional window company. Going to run that washing machine for a full cycle. See what happens. There's nothing in there, so it might not sense anything and run properly. Electrical power is good for the dryer. Got a plastic laundry tub over here. It's not attached to anything, but it isn't draining or isn't leaking or anything below. No issues there. Door does not shut right. Door is catching up at the top. A little bit of repair on that. Probably had a clothes rack or something like that hanging on the top of the door. Into the bathroom is gonna check our sinks, check our toilets, make sure nothing's moving. It's a little bit loose. Yeah, those nuts are loose. That's better. Get a good flush. Steel tub. So it's metal. You got your Marlite panels. Nice panels, but you still have some caulking gaps to worry about. Those in there are starting to crack out pretty good. Got to keep that moisture contained. Even out here on the side of the bathtub. Don't want that to turn out. And we do want to check our overflows to make sure they're working properly. So that overflow isn't keeping up with the sink, but... So it's helping. It's not going to prevent a flood. Make sure that overflow isn't leaking into the cabinet. But yeah, we don't have much time before that starts coming right over the edge. It's just gonna fill up that whole sink area. And then we check it for drainage, make sure that it drains quickly and efficiently. Oh well, look, we've got some water leaks. So. It's coming from, oh yeah, it's coming from the drain stop right there. See how corroded that is? So when you pull your drain stop, that bar lifts up. And that's what's connected to the drain stop handle. So if you were to pull that down or push it down, that'll open your drain. So you need to replace that connection right there. It's not a hard fix, just hard to get to. So we have a leaking diverter valve. So when I pull that knob up, that takes all the water and shoves it up to the shower head, right? Well, if you don't have a good seal on it, it leaks and it still allows water to come out through the tub spout. So there's rust, corrosion, something build up in there that's preventing that from sealing 100% of the way. Just some repairs. Gotta make sure that ventilation fan works. Doesn't sound very good. It sounds like it's getting old. Probably needs to be updated or repaired. But we're finding more sheetrock cracks. Oh, teeth. That looks terrible. They're everywhere in this house. 
needs to be cleaned up. All right, let's get into the garage. We will not lock the bottom handle. Look at that. Well, already that's not good. This door should have some tension on it. Should have self-closing hinge. It's got two of them. Just needs to be adjusted so this door automatically closes. You might need to be replacing these. It's hard to tell without adjustment, adjusting them and checking. You got a nice little crack on the door here too. Looks like somebody's hit that pretty hard. So just adjust those, make sure this door closes and you don't get CO2 or carbon monoxide back into the house. Now yeah, just open these up. Got an attic hatch right here. Working all right. Sensors put in on the bottom for safety. Yeah, they're still working down there. That's going to be annoying. Checking the floor for any excessive cracking, major cracks, more drywall cracks right there. That actually looks like it's being pushed together at the bottom. You can see it gets bigger as it goes down or more com compacted as it goes down. There's more of a ripple. Yeah, you can see that. It's actually offset a little bit there. Been a lot of movement in the sheetrock of this house. There's a couple of your screens. Now with all these built-in cabinets, a little bit of crack here. I'm not going to be able to see everything behind the cabinets. A lot of the times they're left open on the back side, but a lot of the times they're full of stuff and I can't see anything in there. It's a really good place to find termites because it's a dark area and they don't like light. The more light they're around, the more sunshine they're around, the more they build mud tubes. We got another crack right there. Water heater, 2010, looking at a 50 gallon from GE. Don't see anything crazy on it. We'd like to see some barrier protection so you can't drive into this with your car, so the cement bollard in the way. Got some gaps up there by that electrical junction box we should have filled in just to prevent gases from getting back into the house. Fire barrier protection up there. Then we're looking at the TPR valve. It's all solid copper, a little bit of corrosion on those lines there. Doesn't surprise me. And a bunch of tools, looking for any water damage. That looks like a, something ran down the wall here. From what? I don't see anything. Here's our stabilized cellulose insulation product sheet. Oh, 28 bags. They already had that printed out before they even came here. So they're saying about R30. That was done in 94. So expect some settlement up there of the insulation. You're not going to get the same type of value as you originally did. Exterior door to the garage. Weather stripping is falling apart. Because these are known to have water damage on the outside of them. This actually has a roof overhang, but still have some water damage here work on that trim and replace that weather stripping here. But now on this side of the garage we do have some cracking. Pretty decent cracking going all the way out. Isn't that funny? Because look at this. It doesn't stop there. It continues and this is the crack that we saw going all the way out to the street. This crack extends all the way from here all the way in through your garage. That's a big crack. Anybody remember what causes cracks? Moisture, settlement, movement, instability, expansion, expanding soils. Those are drill and fill marks right there. 
concrete termite treatment marks. So they drill in through those little patches, put in their pesticide or termite treatment, and then they patch them back up with concrete sealant. So get information from the seller and find out when this treatment was done and if there's any warranty still available. I knew I would find termites somewhere here because this has got a lot of moisture on this wall. Just due to the age of the house, I saw this crack down here and a little bit of dust. I was like, yeah, it's just dust, not a big deal. When you look up and it's like in the shape of a tube, let me get a better look at this one in here. That's a termite tube that's been broken down. Somebody tried to take that down so it wasn't visible anymore, but they were getting entry from this little area down here. I don't see anything active today, and these are actually really dry, but this was a termite tube. Well, now that cabinet door broke, I'm not going to be able to go up into the attic. Just think about that. You're up in the attic and then all of a sudden this door wants to close. Nah, never mind. All three of those top cabinets are coming off. The support in between them, in, in between the doors is broken right here. So these are wanting to fall over, this is wanting to fall over too. Need some fixing. See, same crack. All the way in. Too much moisture. Too much moisture from here to here to here. That's what caused that. Another way is if you get the garage door all the way down, you can see the openings on the sides. Not so much going on over here, but you can over there because this is pushed up. It's heaved up a little bit, so now we've got a gap over there. And I can't close this garage door. I can't get it down far enough to latch it. That's all I got. So you're going to need some repairs to the garage door, and if you're not going to fix the garage door or the concrete slab, the garage door isn't going to close. All right, so we have two attic ashes here in the garage, two pull down stairs, one on this side, one on that side. Let's take a peek in this one first. Yeah, let me close this garage door. I suppose we can check it for safety. Stick your foot up. Looks good. So for anybody that knows my car, I hit 250,000 on this beauty last week, a couple weeks ago. Well, it's it's not been cheap. It's not a free car to drive. We've got to replace a lot of stuff on it. But 2010, 250,000 miles. Love that car. Attic hatches are usually made of wood. Oh, okay. That ain't gonna work. Oh, that sucks, okay. Oh, this is really hard to open. These are tight springs. Balls. Okay, can I get this one down? Yep, that's how that's supposed to work. But you can see they're both made of wood. And having a wood on your ceiling here is actually a fire barrier problem because garages are like the number one places for a fire to start in your house. The last thing you want is that fire to jump up in your attic and spread into your house in about 10 minutes. So making those fire barrier protected prevents fires from reaching your house for roughly 45 minutes. Could save your life. I know it doesn't seem like a big deal, but it could save your life someday. I don't like how the 
these stairs are not fully down, but this is just like a little crawl space. Well, that's not good. Come on. Yeah, this is just like a tiny crawl space in the front of the house. That's all it is. Made for storage. I put plywood down up here. It's above the garage, so it doesn't need to be insulated. But it is insulated on that gable wall there. Which is great. Bit of an insulation gap right there. <laughs> but you can't have open spaces like that. That needs to be in a junction box. So an electrician is needed. Well, there's a little crawl space, so if we're in the front of the house, you look towards the back, there's this little crawl space in here. With bad insulation, fiberglass bad insulation, it goes way back. So my goal is to see what's on top of this through that other attic access hatch. Because there's no way I can get access through this little crawl space. And if you look above it, you've got plywood. OSB so I'm not gonna be able to see that insulation other than right here so I'm glad I got a little visual on it. Alright and you can see those things don't even close all the way they leave gaps all the way around so all the carbon monoxide can go up in your attic fire not a good idea. Let's check up in this side Yeah, we've got another enclosed attic space here. Vaulted ceiling, so we're not going to get much visual. That's what we were looking at from the other side. Beam in the front of the house there. Taking a lot of support of the front of the home. And we've got fiberglass insulation. Got a little bit of a insulation gap there but this is possibly an, I'm not sure where that wall goes to but condensate lines from the air handler going to the exterior the condensate lines poke out of the outside of the house there another open junction anytime I see wire nuts it's got to be in a junction box Got to be in one of those blue or metal boxes. I can't see those wire nuts exposed like that. Because you know, a kid sees that bright yellow thing, wants to take it off and see what the heck's underneath of it. It's nice, nice and uh, fun to play with. So you just don't want kids taking those off and playing with the wires. They look nice and yellow and they look like toys, but they're not. Yeah, gonna have to fix that. Okay, that does it for the first floor, besides the kitchen. Feels like it's cooled down nicely as so, well. Let's go upstairs, let's see what we can find up here. 400 pounds, I don't know. It's a little bit loose right there. Yep. Needs a little tightening. We've got the doorbell, smoke detectors up here, opens up into the master on the left. Terrible carpet. This thing is wrinkled. Let me guess, bed and dog pee, probably. Look at that beauty. All the way from the wall in through the ceiling that's a nice crack you can start right above the door it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as it goes up it gets into the ceiling and it loses its tension been a lot of movement here door stops it goes without saying come on Interior French doors usually only have one latch up at top. 
They're usually broken or busted. These come in two different sizes. Typically they're about $30 a piece if you need to replace one. It's really not that hard. You pull these two screws out, pull it out, replace it. Quite often what will happen is painters will come through and they'll tape that hole up and then they won't remove the tape. And then these get bound up in that tape. This one's working fine today though. That's all it takes to close that side. A little bit of movement isn't the end of the world to me. If you wanted to correct that shaking, you could wrap some black tape around that or silver tape, whatever color preference you have. So when it goes up into that hole, there isn't as much play there. Backyard windows, this is south. So this is dirty. Hey puppy, taking a look at any of the seal damage that might have occurred. Oh yeah. Oh, we're back to this again. Okay. More plastic damage. More plastic damage. More plastic damage. That one's good. Ugh. You know what? I'm just gonna pop this screen and go outside on this roof deck here. There we go. Alright. Well, I'm glad it came out here. Where's the flashing? Yes, forgot your flashing. There should be a metal transition here to help prevent any water from going back into that gap and going down into the patio. That conduit shot. Need some replacing on that. The roof surface itself doesn't look terrible. Looks nice, looks good, no cracking, no buckling, alligatoring, anything crazy going on, but I just don't like that. You can see that crack forming right there already. That crack is gonna let water go down into the patio ceiling. So definitely should have had some type of metal flashing put here to direct water away from that gap. So yeah, let's get an electrician out to replace the conduit, go into the ceiling fans on the patio. I don't even know why they use so much of it. What was the point? That's way longer than it needed to be. And the sports are broke. That should be clamped in like that right there. Repairs needed. Try and get a look, good look at the outside of these windows the best I can. There's a little bit of screen damage there. Making sure there's no open seals, cracks around the windows and the stucco. Don't look too bad, just aged. Then another gable vent up on top. The window that I just crawled out of and came back in, it's got the same thing as we do downstairs. It's actually a gap right there. You can see outside from underneath the window. It's because it goes down so much. Dip. All right, so primary closet. I know I've got a attic hatch up here. It's probably not gonna be a real big attic because this is a vaulted ceiling. But I'd like to find out what we do have going on up there, so I'm going to go grab my ladder and then I'm going to come up and start testing this bathroom. Oh, keys. I wonder what they're for. Probably looking for them. Alright. I'm going to get a face full of crap, aren't I? Too bad. Well, 
I do have some blown in cellulose. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to get up here that far. But yeah. Big duct work. Coming over the master. Looking for any signs of roof leaks. Don't see any up here. All right, so the primary bathtub filled up nicely. We've got a lot of water pressure coming out of the faucet. Everything looked good. A little bit of discoloration to the water, but it's been sitting in the water heater for a long time. Probably want to run that a little bit extra before you move in, before you start taking showers. Looking around in the shower here, got quite a bit of corrosion, caulking gaps. Look underneath that. It's not pretty. Need to prevent all moisture from getting behind there and dropping down to the ceiling below us because we're on the second floor. Now these panels are really nice because they keep everything concealed except for these caulking joints which really need to be updated about every couple years. Down here in Arizona we get a lot of this mineral deposits, a lot of corrosion, we get a little bit of Get a little bit of rust and corrosion over here in the corner, some mold growing behind the caulking, even more corrosion there by the door, all the way up, pretty moldy. On the bottom of the floor, the bottom of the shower is actually not that great. Excessive water dripping here, shower being on all the time. Ran the sinks for a little while, drained them out, drain stops were working fine, check for leaks underneath the sinks. This one had a leak. And it's not coming from the drain stop this time. It's coming from the drain connection on the bottom of the sink. You can see the water up there. Water doesn't go upward, so we got water up here. It's likely leaking from that loose connection right there that I just turned about another half turn. Maybe it's not leaking anymore, but it's still going in the report. Primary laboratory. We always have a flatulence fan. Seems to be working just fine. Make sure that the toilet doesn't move. Oh, it does. Quite a bit of movement to it. Even the, even the tank is moving. thing is loose on the floor so I'm gonna have to tighten this up make sure nothing's leaking while you do it so we're gonna let that drain sounds like it's gonna drain I want to make sure to check it down on the first level when we get that far thermostat up here is working good got a filter up there that's a little bit dirty just like the one downstairs but it's not Terrible. Just get the system serviced before you move in. Let's go ahead and check this bathroom for function. The hot. Going down. Hot. More green stuff. Make sure nothing's leaking like a sieve. And then just let those run for a little bit. Water leaks outside the bathtub. Not quite as bad on that side. Plastic tub. Same panels on the outside. Same shower head it looks like. Yeah, we got the same issue with this leaking diverter valve. You know, I got the shower on, so you're trying to take a shower, but it's trying to fill the bathroom. 
I am glad on the second floor that they do have overflows. Not every house has this nowadays. But, so if this water gets too full, it should go in there. Okay, hot. Connections don't look bad, but they do look like the original angle stops. Same with over here. Drain stops can usually be adjusted so they can open up a little bit farther than that. Toilet, the same thing. Just the tank on the back is a little bit loose. It's not bad though. Looks good. Actually, sometimes on the back of a toilet, you'll be able to find a date code. 1994. It's original to the house. We've got a second air handler up here on the second floor. Goodman unit as well. Three ton unit outside, 2011. Condensate lines. Take a look at the air filter here. For any water damage up here because this leaks it's going right onto wood termites will find this location if it gets too wet but I don't see any major problems this is not ideally how we would do an air return now we would have an air return through a duct instead of through a chase or a cavity like this in the wall that way it's just cleaner air you don't have the possibility of Everything back there is on the other side of this filter, so anything back there could get sucked up and pushed out into the duct system. So that's why we want that all sealed in there now. Swap that filter out. And we have a couple bedrooms on the front of the house, three to be specific. Just run around, test the electrical outlets. Make sure we're getting two orange lights. You can see on top of that tester there. These testers actually explain to you exactly what the lights indicate. So quite often I'll find the top one open ground. Every once in a while I'll find an open neutral. Um, not as common are the bottom ones. So, well except for the very bottom one. Because that very bottom one is what we got right now. Not really much going on in the bedrooms up here besides some funky coloring. Looking pretty good. Nail pop up here on the ceiling. Not the end of the world. Looking out here on the roof surface, flat stucco. Not seeing anything concerning. Not sure our closet doors are secure. I checked all the electrical here. Just a random band in. And the purple room. Love the purple room. These registers are loose against the wall there. It should be sealed up. Just prevent that dirt from coming out on those cracks like that. It's not good. More plastic window trim damage. Uh, lifting windows. Hopefully your daughter doesn't like to sneak out. Get right on the roof right here. Well that about does it for my inspection today. 
go through and get them. So now that I'm back home, I'm starting to think a little bit more about all the foundation issues, the moisture issues that we had at that house. I think we were having a lot of water runoff from the roof, go down on the west side of that house where it was trapped by that sidewalk, where we didn't have any drainage, and it was actually heaving that concrete slab vertical. So all that excessive moisture goes underneath the ground, and if it doesn't have anywhere to go, it's going to push stuff up. It's going to expand. So the path of least resistance for that water pressure or the soil pressure, if it's expanded, expansive soils, it's going to go upward. So it's going to push that slab up. That's why we saw the patio slab with a nice big crack in it and it went vertical. That's why we were seeing the circle cracks around that other column on the other side of the pad uh, of the patio. So they definitely have some structural issues going on. I'm not going to be able to verify exactly what it needs to fix it or repair it. So I'm going to recommend my company, Arizona Foundation Solutions. I really like the work they do. I've saw it done before. Not the cheapest company, but they are one of the best ones that I know of. Even in Arizona, moisture causes more stinking problems than anything else. So get your home inspected get somebody in there to take a look at everything. I'd be happy to do it for you. I'm Home Inspector Dan. I live in Phoenix. I work all around Phoenix. Give me a call. You know, I'll be your scout. I'll go in and I'll find this stuff for you. I'll give you a nice documented report. You can negotiate with the sellers at that point. And hopefully get yourself a nice house to live in. It's something you're happy and comfortable with. Something that you can work with. Everybody's got a different budget. Nobody needs to buy a $3 million house, but you know everybody deserves to live happy and comfortably and at least aware of what they're buying when they do buy it. So, beautiful day out here in Arizona. Can't complain too much, but I'm going to go finish my report, and thanks for watching. You guys have a good day.